All right, it's time for the, uh, well, brand new episode of Student of the Gun Radio. Thank you for joining us for Student of the Gun episode number 1159. 1,159 episodes. There's actually more than that because we've got a whole bunch of part ones and part twos and stuff like that. But whatever, what's what's 1,200 episodes between friends? Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Duracoat finished firearms today. We're going to talk about Brownells bullet points. What do they have going on? Uh, we've got a dangerous, are you dangerous on demand? Are you ready to be dangerous on demand? I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, we've got a... a uh, just a ridiculous story from Evanston, Wyoming yeah. that we, we meant to get to last week, but we weren't able to get to it. Uh, and then we've got the, uh, we're going to give you mental ammunition so that you can be prepared to deal with the shenanigans that are about to go down in about two weeks. Now uh, we've got some serious shenanigans that are going to go down in about two weeks. What's that place with all the crap on the walls? Are you like, uh, cheese sticks when you go because they're cheese oh you mean shenanigans <laughs> shenanigans shenanigans wolverines Woo! yeah all right so there we go uh let's i guess um and i hope you had if you're watching this in the days of future past and it is actually wednesday i hope you had a good uh, hug your AK day. If you took a photo and didn't put it up yet, go ahead and do that. You still can. I mean, you're an American. You can do whatever you want. Uh, so uh, let's hit it. Hit it, Zach. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Yes, it is I. Look at me. Uh, look at me. I am here. Here I am. I am here. All right, uh, Hug Your AK Day. We've been doing it since 2012. Yes, Comrade Barry Sotero, he's the one that inspired us to start doing this. We, we knew, I knew we were screwed uh, during the second presidential debate of 2012 when Comrade Barry started carping about Nobody needs an AK-47 and uh, guns on our streets. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't talk gun control going into a general election. You never do that unless, unless you've already counted up all the votes. Unless you've already figured out that you're going to win because you've counted the votes already. So if you've already counted the votes, or in the case of Sniffy Joe Biden, if you've already manufactured the votes, then you can say whatever you want. That's when I knew we were in trouble, and that's when I knew that we had to address the, uh, the bias and racism against the AK-47, the AKM rifle. So uh, that's why I came up with i had zach zach do you remember snapping the original tiger woods photo i do remember that actually yeah that was uh back in the backyard and miss pippy yeah it was the we had the the outdoor studio set up with the camouflage nets and stuff and i said zach take it you need to come out here and snap a photo of me and so he did and we put it up and the rest as they say is history her, her story history that's right it's history all right if you're watching live right. on the discord channel and you have a question we have answers go ahead and throw them in there uh other than that or it, it, let's just go ahead and jump into our uh, duracoat finish firearm of the week what should be All right, well, do you want me to do the show? I'm doing the show. All right, it is time for our Duracoat Finish Firearm segment brought to you by our good buddies at Duracoat Finish, Duracoat Firearm Finishes. Uh, and, of course, if you'd like to be an expert finisher, 
Well, they'll teach you how to be an expert starter and an expert finisher. Wouldn't you say that's true, Jared? Yes. They will teach you. They will teach you how to not only to be an expert finisher, but an expert starter. And all you have to do is go over to Duracoat University's online Duracoat certification course. They'll give you, they'll set you up uh, with everything you need to know to be a pro finisher. And here's the deal, guys. Man, I'm talking to you Men. right now. Just because, you gotta set your ego aside. Just because set you're you. a man does not mean you're an expert finisher. Okay. Yeah, that's right. You need to, you need to get some training. Get to get some training. So my question to you guys out there in the audience is, what color would you Duracoat your AK? That's a good question, isn't it? You could do, I mean, you could have traditionalists who do the uh, wood. You have to have wood. Slightly darker black, you know. Uh, and you don't, yeah, you don't have to. Uh, you can Duracoat on wood. Uh, I wouldn't, I mean, you can Duracoat on anything you want. Um do whatever but you want. Duracoat actually has wood refinishing kits. So if, if you've got an AK with a wooden stock and wooden forearm and so forth, and they're pretty beat up, they can help you refinish those so they don't look like warmed over garbage. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, Vern? Uh, of course, all the parts on an AK are either, uh, well, they're either stamp steel or they're machine steel. Uh, maybe, well, no, that's not true. If you get an Occam Defense AK, there's alum there's aluminium on there. Yeah, there is aluminium on an Occam Defense AK. But uh, what what color would you Duracoat your AK? I mean, you could go with something traditional like uh, slightly darker black. You do that. I like that. Uh, or a uh, the World War II olive drab green. I really like the World War II olive drab green. You know what makes a great combination uh, is combining the slightly darker black and the world war ii olive drab so you could make the furniture black and then the body green or the body green and the furniture black or whatever you can do whatever you want man uh you could do the i'm not sure where we stand with the baby poop yellow and bush green yet uh whether or not enough of our fan base has very politely contacted uh Duracoat and said, Hey, I would like to have that. I would purchase it from you. If you made it available to me, I would make that. I would do that. Uh, and if you'd like to do that, it's really easy. The, the people at Duracoat are some fantastic individuals and uh, just go to their website. And at the bottom, you guys know how to navigate a website. If you don't go get your 14 year old grandson, uh, and they'll help you out. Uh, it says contact us. And then there's a little one that says, send a note. Put in your name, your email address, and your message. And the message would be, Baby Poop Yellow, yes, I will purchase that from you. And it's as simple as that. So for all your professional firearms finishing, refinishing, coding needs, we go to Duracoat Finish Firearms because they have more SKUs, they have more options than any other firearm refinishing company on planet Earth. Yeah, they, you know they have a Dura Park. Like what? Where you go play? Yeah, no, no, no. A Dura Park. It's a parkerizing. It's not just colors. They have Dura dyes, which is an adenizing. Where's Dura dyes? Dura dyes. D i z e. Dura dyes. That's right. So the Dura dyes. He's like. I want my gun to look like it was anodized. Well, it, th dude, they've got so many colors. They've got black. They've got red, green, yellow, purple, orange. No, let me see. No, I mean, all right, it's black, dark earth, OD green, sapphire, violet, scarlet, wine. Oh, you ready for one, Jared? Chartreuse. Yes chartreuse ginger when i pick out my uh my turtlenecks it's a it's a choice for me it's between chartreuse and slightly darker black <laughs> those are the two colors that i have to choose from mm. and jade that's the dura dyes so uh, literally you, you could there's so many options i know it could get confusing to you but uh that's why it's going to be an american 
That's why it's good to be an American. All right, moving on. Moving on. SDS Imports, the uh, title sponsor of Student of the Gun Radio. And you may have heard of them. And if you go to SDSimports.com right now, Sierra, Delta, Sierra, what do they have, Jared? What's got available? TSS pistols, Takarov shotguns. They've got the, the VP-12 that we did a video on for you guys. If you yes, we did. seen that, go to our Juxy channel. That's tunerthegun.com slash Juxy. Watch that video on the VP-12 from SDS Imports. Yes, you can and should do that. You can and should do that. So... Uh, something that uh, occurred this last weekend, I partnered with uh, Ready Man and Juxy. Yes, me. Hi, this is me. Uh, I partnered with Ready Man and Juxy to do a battle box review, uh, and I and uh, I did more than just an unboxing. What I did was I did an unboxing, and then I went out into the woods and I used some of the stuff. Oh, I was going to watch that video until. You said it was more than an unboxing. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I just wanted to watch you unbox the box. You just wanted me to, to watch open you the use box. the products. Yeah, I didn't want you to watch you use the stuff. I just want you to. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. so it was a gorgeous weekend. Oh, oh, it was just beautiful. The 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 trees, you know, we get that that short window, that tiny, like it, in, in uh, Wyoming, the fall is usually the third weekend of October. Mm -hmm. That's autumn. <laughs> it's <That's> funny because <laughs> uh, we, we, we we pretty much go in wyoming we go from winter or from summer to winter bam like you remember when fall we remember the the fall of 2022 you mean the third weekend in october yeah that that was that was it <laughs> but it was it was gorgeous the the trees are changing in the mountains the yellow gold the aspens are all gold right now uh, and it was in the in the mid sixties, maybe low seventies uh, this weekend. Just beautiful. So I went out and I I took a bunch of stuff out there. And, and uh, thanks to Juxy and uh, Ready Man for for hooking me up. And we're going to be doing more videos very soon for you guys. So, so I just thought you'd like to know. I thought you'd like to know that. Oh. Uh, Something that I'm not sure if people are aware of. Okay. If you go to high-pointfirearms.com and there's a tab on there that says shop accessories, you can ah, literally yes. buy accessories right there. You don't have to go to a, your local dealer. You can just go directly to the thing, buy the accessories, and they get shipped to you. Hmm. I didn't, I was not aware. What are some there. of the accessories? You, know, you got magazines, you got optics, you got grips and shrouds, you got extras. What's in the extras? Extra, extra, read all about it. Oh, read all about it. Compensators for your high point firearms. Do not use. What are you compensating for? That's right. That's uh, what I want to know. What are you compensating? Oh, they've got the gun cleaning mats, which these things, if they're this, they look similar to the ones that we have, and uh, they're pretty high quality. Mm -hmm. Those of you that got the student, did we sell the student of the gun mat or did we just get them for ourselves, Zach? No, we sold them. We sold yeah, out. After so those of you that got the student of the gun mat, you're welcome for that. Yeah, they're yeah. Good. There you go. I still have mine. I still have mine. You can get a sling kit for the carbine. My workbench. It's out there on the on one of those things. There you go, and you can get you can get uh, custom grips, which is uh, uh, you can get the cash print grips. You can get the America grips. Let me see view. Do, 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 ba, do, do, ba, do, do. So, which custom grips can you get? Let's see. Select. You can get the cash print hundred dollar bill. Hundred dollar bill, yo. That's the best kind. Uh, American flag. You can get the faux wood. Looks like it looks like wood grain, but it's not really wood. It's polymer. You can get a bunch of different faux woods. You can get uh, you can get pink camo if that's your bag, man. How did you get there? Uh, I clicked on the uh, the the grips. I clicked on the thing that says custom grips. And that's when I went. Oh, oh, oh. No. right there. Yeah. Oh, oh I found. It. I see how you are. I see how you are. So there you go. All kinds of stuff for you guys. There you go. All right, moving on. Where are we going to move on to? I don't know. Let's uh, move on to the next thing which is you closing that hole under your nose and listening louder. Attention new listeners. 
We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yeah, you are wrong, but you don't want to be wrong, but do you? I don't want to wrong, be wrong, but uh, <laughs> there you go. Now you know what to do. And knowing is half the battle. Let's go ahead and bop right on over to Brownells for our Brownells bullet points. Ooh, I was getting a little bit of winter love to that uh, AK right there. All right, all right, all right. Are you familiar with the BRN-180? If you're not, you should make yourself familiar with it. So what they have done is they've actually, uh, they had a first-generation BRN-180, and the BRN-180 is their faithful reproduction of the stoner-based AR-180, or the Armalite affectionately known as the Armalite rifle, which is kind of interesting to me because the AR-10 stands for Armalite Rifle Model 10. The AR-15 is the Armalite Rifle Model 15. But the AR-18 or the AR-180, the difference is one of them is select fire and one of them is not. Of course, I guess you're always selecting the fire, yeah. If even if it's safe right. and semi. But uh, they affectionately became known as the Armalite. And they were very popular in the 70s and 80s. And then they just kind of whoop, disappeared. Kind of disappeared. Well, the folks at Brownells brought them back. And they brought them back as the BRN, chart for Brownells, the BRN 180. I didn't know that there were 180 degrees of burns. I thought there were only three or four. Mm, that's true. Five, so. Six. The BRN-180, in case you haven't been paying attention, is now available in multiple configurations. You can get it. Yeah, keep that up there for me. You can get it in a 300 blackout pistol, 10-inch pistol barrel. You can get it in a 223 wild or 762 by 39 pistol barrel. You can get it in a rifle length barrel of 16 inches in 223 wild. Um, and if you guys don't know, a 223 Wild chambering will accept both 223 Remington and 556 millimeter NATO. Uh, they got a 16 inch barrel. They have a sport version, and the sport version actually has a redesigned charging handle. Then they have an 18 and a half inch barreled version for people who want a more traditional rifle style. So. Yes, um, the point is the BRN-180 is a faithful reproduction of the original stoner-based AR-18 or AR-180 or the Armalite. And you young kids out there have no idea. You guys got no idea how cool the Armalite uh, rifle is. And uh, you say, well, I'll just buy an original. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, go ahead and get back to me on that. Go ahead and buy the original and then uh, get back to me and let me know how that worked out for you. <laughs> how come we, in the gun industry, we went from manufacturing gas piston operating, using the gas piston operating system, then we left that, and then now we're back to it? That I don't know. Our wor The gun world is so cyclical. I learned this about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, about how cyclical I'm pretty sure it was Walt Roush who said he said look the gun world is cyclical he goes if you like something and it, 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 does, it went away just wait be calm it'll come back around it's like fashion oh uh, I'll give you a great example the uh, the little pocket guns were really popular in the 80s they were crap but they're popular uh, and then they went away and the high cap nines 
everybody had to have high cap nines, high cap nines, whatever it was, the Glocks and so on and so on. Berettas, Glocks, Berettas, Sig 226 in the 90s. Everybody had to have those. Uh, the Smith & Wesson 5906, which was a turd, but whatever. And then, all of a sudden, in the early 2000s or mid-2000s or whatever, the 380 was back. Everybody had a new 380. All the manufacturers had new 380s. Uh, 10 millimeter, super hot in the 80s, fizzled out in the 90s, and we'll look at that. Now everybody's got to have a 10 mil again. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. So, but, you know, the, the, I, I believe that the, uh, the AR-180 uh, style uh, is, is legit. It is a very legitimate style, and it, it's kind of weird that uh, it didn't catch on. And and people complain. We still have people complaining about the direct gas impingement. Like, I never, I would never buy a gun that 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 you know pukes into its own mouth or something like that. Or that's so they're they from like, well, cool. Do you have a an armor light? You have an AR one eighty? No. <laughs> well, that was the <laughs> stoners like okay. You got to feel bad or feel for Gene Stoner. So he came up with the AR-15, and people got all mad. And they're like, I don't like that. I don't like the way it operates. And so Stoner's like, okay, I'll make a gas piston gun right here. You want that one? No, we don't want that one either. <laughs> well, what well, what do you want exactly? No, but if you guys would like to avail yourself to the goodness that is uh, the BRN 180. Uh, if you'd like to avail yourself to that, then uh, then you can, uh, and you can, and because you, you're an American, and I would suggest, I would suggest, if this is something that you want to do and you're excited about, doing it sooner versus later. What do you think? Uh, what do you know about? Stuff? Yeah, what do you know? You don't know nothing. You don't know nothing by nothing. Yeah. What I would really like to do, and I have not done it yet, but... Uh, oh, and real quick aside, if you decide you want to build a, uh, a BRN-180 rifle, they have the original... Uh, well, it's not original, but it's a, it's a replica of the original side-folding Armalite stock. They have that at Brownells, so... Uh, and you can also get the original uh, slant magwell design, the Armalite slant magwell design, uh, lower receiver. So that's actually pretty cool, too. Uh, uh, I, if you want to get on that, get on it. If you don't, then don't. I don't care. You're an American. Do whatever you want to do. But whatever you do, make sure that you support our good buddies at Brownells. All right. Now it's time for me to be quiet and you to listen louder. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. Shop do, and that's what you should do. Yep. Shop SOTG is where you can get all of your needs in your life, including the brand new uh, Hug Your AK stickers that look like this. Look like Ta -da. this. Ta-da. Yes, indeed. What? The brand new Have You Hugged Your AK Today uh, stickers based off the, uh, as Dad likes to call it, the Tiger Woods photo. I did not dub it that. Someone else did. Who dubbed it that? I'm I'm kind of like She Hulk. Somebody else gave gave it that name. Who dubbed it that? I don't know. It's been ten years, man. It's it's been ten years. The original Tiger Woods photo. It was maybe it was a guy named Nick or Nicholas Orr. No, it, it was, and I, I don't. Nick wasn't even writing back then. That's right. He wasn't. Um, uh, I don't think we knew him then. No. Well, I mean, I I've, I've actually known him for thirty years. Oh. I've known Nick Orr for thirty years. Oh, no kidding. Actually, I've known him since I was 16 or 17 years old. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's an old friend. I've known, I've known him that long. Anyhow, but yeah, shopsotg.com right, uh, right now. It's on, it's on the homepage. You don't have to look hard for it. 
Uh, hug your AK stickers. Get yours today. Are you trying to say that it's been more than 30 years since I was 16? Yes. I'm just saying at least it's been at least 30 years. All right. <laughs> and Zach went to all the trouble. G- give me the single cam. Uh... Zach went to all the trouble to make these freaking stickers for you freaks. So show him some love, you freaks. All right. Skip, Moving on. Skip one cup of coffee if you need to. Come on. Student of the Gun Homeroom, brought to you by our good friends at CrossbreedHolsters.com. Have you ever had a wife who said to you, can't you just sit down? Why do you always have to strategically place yourself in the restaurant? Uh, well, because of crap like this, because that's my mindset. All right, Jared, going back to uh, tactical response training from years ago, who gets first dibs on seating in restaurants? Uh, whoever's armed. No, not just the young, whoever's the armed. Youngest, the leader who, uh, that is armed. Huh? The young, the youngest that is armed. Nope. What? The leader. Nope. Nope. No, it's the single Dad. dude. Single. Well, okay. Armed. That's that's like the the youngest should be this. The well, it's one, not right? necessarily. But okay, you say well, armed people. Yeah, but the thing is, if you go out with with like minded individuals, you're probably all going to be armed. It's true. So the uh, armed single men get first dibs because they're the they're the they're the first designated one. shooters. Uh, because the married men, if they're with their wives and children, are going to pre- you know they're going to protect them. So the armed single men get first dibs uh, when it comes to seating in a restaurant. And if you ever go out with a group of friends and you say, "I'm going to sit here," and they're like, "No, no, I want to sit here," and you're like, "Are you carrying?" No. Then guess what? You don't get a choice. Uh, are, are, and if you're out with people that don't carry, like if you're the guy, you always get first choice at seating. And if they don't, if they don't like it, say, all right, peace out. Guard yourself. Bye. Uh, we had a story out of Los Angeles. You know, it seems like they're not really reporting this. It was actually very difficult. I, I saw a, a, uh, a, a news blip on either some socialist media account, and I was trying to run the original source story. It was very difficult for me to find the source story for this because apparently the media they're not really advertising this they're not eh, you know you think it would be a big deal but well it is california and californians are all disarmed by design so what happened here right there it says los angeles yep. taco bell stabbing of so taco bell apparently the restaurant stabbed an 82 year old man mm-hmm. in wheelchair caught on video um Okay. English. An 82-year-old man in a wheelchair was stabbed in an unprovoked attack earlier this month while inside a Los Angeles restaurant. The attack occurred just before 7 p.m. on October 3rd inside Taco Bell in the Mar Vista area. Security footage shows the suspect entering the fast food restaurant and approaching the man from behind. Hey, Zach, Jared, can I, can I point something out real quick? Yeah. Um, the secure why didn't the security stop this guy from getting stabbed because it's a camera oh because it's actually not a, because cameras can't provide security it's a surveillance camera you see those cameras on the walls are not security cameras they're surveillance cameras they're so you can watch what happened later well, yeah but if you put a blinking white light on it it becomes a security camera oh is that how it works yeah because then people will see it and run away oh okay the suspect then stabbed the man in the neck and shoulder and then fled. The victim was taken to a hospital, treated for severe injuries. No kidding. So he, uh, he is listed in critical condition and is recovering. The suspect is described as a bald man between 20 and 30 years of age. He's about five feet, five inches to five feet, six inches tall and weighs around 130 pounds. And it looks like he was wearing a mask because, well, that's what we do in America now. said that he has a large tattoo on the back of his head 
and a small tattoo next to his left eye. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, since it's California and they've got all that awesome gun control, there were no armed citizens to smoke this joker into the ground. Um, now, I'm looking at this picture. Zach, can you plop this picture on the screen so that we can analyze it real quick? There's a picture of, yeah, it's the main picture. Yeah. So the door, uh, if you're looking at the photograph from my from my perspective, the door is on the right side. I think that there might be a second door right here underneath the camera. Maybe. But it could also just be the corner windows. Yeah. So I'm thinking that you know, from, from a, a standpoint of where you're choosing when you get to a table and you're choosing where to sit, mm. uh, you obviously want to have, you want to be able to see the all the entrances if possible but definitely the main entrance and um, like from this i'm looking at this table here there might also be another door because there's a mat right there you see that by the trash can mm. i, I think yeah. Yeah, there's a mat in front of the, so there's yeah, a door there there's a door behind him so there's well the video showed this guy walking in from the right door right he walked in farted around reached in his pocket and then just unprovoked like stabbed this dude just like randomly yeah yeah but i'm looking at the, from a, a tactical quote-unquote standpoint mm. when you're choosing where to sit if this where this camera is underneath the camera is indeed a corner and not another door then right there would have been perfect because nobody can get to you or at least see people before they approach you yeah and you're yeah, like so- well what is this poor old guy supposed to do i i don't know what this poor old guy is supposed to do if it would have been jeff cooper he would have smoked this joker right into the ground yeah if it would have been an 82 year old jeff cooper or an 82 year old walt roush they would have smoked this joker yeah. and then we wouldn't be uh this guy is gonna hurt people he's at large and anybody who would do this is not he's going to hurt more people okay uh it's gonna happen and uh oh october 15th one shot two stabbed in a night of mayhem across new york city what new york city has the most gun control and is the safest city in america Wait, one shot and two stabbed in Night of Mayhem? Yeah, I don't know. It, that, that sounds like a normal Thursday for New York, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it was in Queens. Or no, it was in Manhattan. One shot in Queens and two were stabbed in Manhattan. You're not supposed to be stabbed in Manhattan because that's where people have lots of money. But, eh, whatever. I, I so will say, po- it, uh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, point being, student of the gun homeroom, dangerous on demand. Part of it is mindset uh, it doesn't do you any good to be completely armed and strapped if some dude can just walk up to you in public, touch you on the shoulder without you knowing that they're there. Uh, part of it is mindset, and part of mindset is being situationally aware because uh, guns are not magic talisman, or are they? Maybe they are. Yes. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> we know somebody that's proven that. The that's gree-gree. Not the case. <laughs> I, I don't know if we're allowed to share that story on the, on the radio show, yeah, though. no. Definitely not. Yeah, uh, but uh, uh, Sammy has gotten used to the whole. Just talking about like going out in public and being situationally aware. She she made fun of me a little bit at first, but now she's gotten used to it. Which is that I always have to be in the seat that faces the door. That's right. Like I'll I'll never sit down and not face the door. At first she made fun of me for it, but now whenever we go out somewhere, she just automatically sits with her. She's back like, to the door. oh yeah, yeah. So that, that's something that we had to. We didn't have to like go through. She didn't like fight me on it, but she was like, oh ha ha, whatever. But now she's just used to it, and yeah, yeah, you're like, oh, oh, that makes sense. Yes, yeah, magic talisman. Tal- what did we call that article anyway? Gregory or something. Uh, talisman guns. There's actually a company that makes guns called the Talisman. Uh, handguns, the American Talisman by the Shooting Wire. Uh, handguns. Yeah. Well, wow. Look at the date on that. Wow. June 15th, 2012. June 15th, 2012 from Paul Markle. Yes. Look at the way that was formatted. Uh, <laughs> I guarantee I did not submit it like that. <laughs> Shooting wire. Oh, yes, indeed. So uh, pay attention to what's going on around you, kids. Uh, it could be your life. I'm just saying. And speaking of being dangerous on demand, let's go ahead and talk about what happens when animals attack. Uh, So we got a story from KSLTV.com. Evanston woman recovering in hospital after run-in with a buck. 
Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a, a fair warning here. If you listen to this video, you are going to want to claw your eyes out or, well, claw your ears out probably or ears off. It's, um, it's really super annoying, but it, there is a lesson to be learned here. There's a lesson to be learned. So, Jared, you want to jump in on this? Uh, Evanson woman recovering in hospital after running with Buck, October 10th. Yep. A woman in Evanston was hospitalized after she was gored by a buck just outside her back door Thursday morning. The buck also jabbed her husband when he jumped in to help. Mm. It was a real shock for a neighborhood that is used to seeing plenty of deer. Yep. Yeah. On Thursday, mid morning, Wanda Ke Wanda Kanor stepped outside to take her husband, Daniel, to an appointment. There was this buck sitting there just laying there, he said. Wanda was startled and so was their dog. He went after him. Of course, the buck didn't like that. So he went after him with his antlers and shoved him underneath the car. Talking about the dog. Yeah, so that's, that's when Wanda got, fought back with, what did she fight back with? She threw her hat at the thing, and of course, it uh, came she, What she got in her hand, hand you got groceries? A, a, a per, I a don't know what it was. I got the video if you want to play it. Yeah, go ahead and play that. Is it, is it ready to be played? So if you're watching on Discord, prepare to see stuff and uh if you're listening if you're just listening prepare to hear stuff it's like a grocery bag a story Damn. you will see only that on sucks. ksl a woman in evanson is hospitalized tonight after she was gored by a buck just outside her yesterday morning now that buck also jabbed her husband when he jumped in to help new specialist jed bull yeah, those... has more on the shock to the neighborhood that's used to seeing plenty of deer so yeah, we'll, we'll just go ahead and rewind back to like the actual deer part because i'm obviously we don't want to hear the whole thing it's do just we? chilling right there it's like yeah hey, so the um, dog runs after it the little uh ankle winter biter. dog yeah and the deer's like nope but it, I don't even think it hit the dog. I think the dog. No, was it didn't. Yeah, the dog ran. The dog was going to be fine. The dog, the dog was, was under the car. If I could but, fit under that car, that's where I would have been too. Yeah. And to be fair, for, from her angle, she couldn't really see that. All she knows is that the dog ran, and then it was like on the other side of the car, and then the deer. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's let's go ahead sorry, and sorry, let's go ahead and part for a reality check here. Yeah. Uh, you, those the that mule deer, that's the stuff. Oh, that's, maybe he did get it. The things that's uh, sticking out of the top of his head. Those are hard and sharp. That's what they use to defend themselves in the wild. If And deer, especially a, a mule deer, is nothing but muscle, okay? If you go head-to-head -head with a buck, and that's like a 10-pointer, uh, or let me see, a 5x5, five five, if you're out in Wyoming, it's a 5x5. It's a, it's a five five. Um it's going to stab you, okay? Uh, what are you thinking? Well, t to be fair, like when I, when I heard about this song, and a song, when I heard the about this, video, this story, uh, I assumed it was another case of, oh, look at the pretty animal. No. That makes you yeah. like, 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 and I was going to make a comment about, clearly this wasn't like a Saratoga, Wyoming deer where they're just hanging out. No, this was like yeah. a Saratoga, Wyoming deer. No, it was. Well, here's the deal. Um, it is, it's rut, it's rutting season right now. So they get a little crazy, you know, deer get a little crazy during the rut, like all males do. Uh, but kids, 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 kids. If you believe that you have to protect yourself from uh, a wild animal, I don't care what it is. The Walmart bag full of, I don't know what is not the thing that you want to use i'm just i'm just saying i'm not trying to be a jerk here but what did she think that that deer was gonna do when she hit it with a i don't know a walmart bag full of, i don't know what was in it like dog shit or something i don't know my but, assumption um, is like it would just like get bothered and go away was yeah what bother. did she think it was gonna do i don't know you can't just run the other direction. You can't just shoot stuff. Like, okay, I, I get that. You can't just shoot stuff. But here's the deal, man. If you go up and you whack a wild animal with a Walmart bag, 
it's probably going to get annoyed with you. And the truth is, if she would have left it alone, the dog was going to be fine. All right. The dog, the dog was going to be fine. If she would have just left that deer alone, it would have, it would have just probably walked away or would have went away or whatever, but I'm not trying to be a dick, but dudes don't do that. Uh, and then we, uh, you know, a, a new story started in bountiful. Did you see that one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen and children of all oh, ages, oh, the husband is pulling on the, I didn't see that part. Yeah. Do you know how strong a, an adult mule deer is? They're literally nothing but muscle. I want to fight one. It's going to. What? I don't know. What you're no, this, at. uh, this. So when you, if you let that video play all the, th- all the way through, Oh, because it said bountiful uh, underneath it. I thought, oh, is it in bountiful? I don't know. It was a bountiful harvest. It was a bountiful harvest. The thing is, though, if you if it was coming right, you know, what's the South Park rule? It's coming right at it's us. It's coming right at us. If it's coming right at you, you know, you know. <laughs> uh, kids, wild animals are, well, they tend to be wild. They do. No. They tend to be wild. Uh and they're dangerous. If you if you're ever kicked by a deer, like let's say a doe, hunters have been have approached wounded deer that they thought were dead and then discovered that they weren't. Yeah. And they've been like kicked or gored or whatever. If a deer kicks you with its leg, like its rear leg especially, it's going to F you up. They're strong. I mean, unless you're unless you're John Saylor choking out a llama, hmm. I'd have paid money to see that. But uh, <laughs> maybe we could... We know somebody that has some alpacas. <laughs> you could probably practice on an alpaca yeah. if you needed to. Yeah, that's right. But uh, I digress. But I digress. So uh, be dangerous on demand. And or like uh, a kangaroo. Yeah, or, yeah. Kangaroos are mother lovers. Remember, yeah, remember that he, dude that punched the kangaroo for his dog? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, but if they real rear back on their tail and get you with those rear legs, they're going to slice you open, Jack, and that's just what's going to happen. So, I'm not telling you guys down there in Australia anything you don't know. All right, what did the Saudis say? So if you guys missed it, uh, about a week ago, Saudi Arabia cut a deal with, uh, with Russia because they don't really need us anymore because we have a, a moronic dementia patient. See, the whole rest of the world... Despite the fact that the United States news media is but has been corrupted into pretending that the uh, the current occupant of the White House is not a dementia riddled meat puppet, the rest of the world knows. You yeah. see, they all know. So, k- kind of a funny thing, just real quick, just talking about like foreign people knowing that Biden is a freaking joke. Uh, yeah. So a bad joke. A bad joke. So and, and it just got get, got a laugh out of me. So I was listening to the Jim Cornette podcast the other day, right? And yes. He, he's a great wrestling mind, but he's very liberal. Yeah. Okay. And one thing that and he's been hardcore on the defending Joe Biden train, right? Are you kidding? No, not even joking. Even a little bit. But here's the funny what thing. What is wrong with him? Is he was talking about a wrestler that he doesn't like, Kenny Omega. And he's uh-huh. been talking about him for a while now. And he made the comment of, I know that Kenny Omega is as bad as I... This is paraphrasing. I know that Kenny Omega is as bad as I think he is because the entire wrestling media is trying to run cover for him. Oh. And the fact that he is a hardcore, staunch Joe Biden supporter, and then he said that about a wrestler, it's just... The kind of like, irony Jim, you can't did, write. Exactly, Jim. Did you hear yourself? Did you hear yourself talking? Yeah. So yeah. Like, yeah. I I know that I know that everything I'm saying about him is right because of just how hard the media is trying to defend him. 
So you got a, we got an image of a dude choking on a deer in a Walmart. Yeah, yeah that reminded me of that as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, but I, well, you know, but yeah, and, and, the, and it's actually very humane because it's 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 just a calm down. Yeah, calm down. Yeah, so everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. That that dude, that's a man right there. Well, a look man at the mustache. That that will, will <laughs> look at the mustache. That will will, will grab a deer and, and put a lateral vascular neck restraint on it. And and the he sees he's got his eyes covered. Yeah, he's got his eyes covered, and he's got he's got it in a uh, a cross body right there. Yeah, it's just he's like calm down, calm down, Bambi. Bambi was a boy. Uh, calm down. Everything's gonna be okay. What was what was Bambi's girlfriend's name? I don't know. Did he have a girlfriend? Did he get married? Stinky. Bam, Bambi got stinky. married. Right? Um, Flower. Flower was the skunk. You dummy. I know. But I don't know what the hell you're talking about in terms of uh, being. Well, I think Bambi grew up and had kids. But anyway, so, oh, yeah. so uh, back to what the hell we were talking about with the sex. So, any hooser, the the whole world knows that Sniffy Joe, the dementia riddled meat puppet, is a joke. So they don't have any respect for him. So the Saudis are like, they like, well, they they have to. They're looking around the world. They're like, okay, who's the most, re- who's more reliable? Who can we rely on more? Biden or Putin? And all you guys out there, all you Putin haters, like, ah, Putin, ah, 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 ah. well, let me tell you what, hate Putin all you want, but he's not a dementia riddled meat puppet that just goes off on like retarded rambling sentences. Did you see what that moron said this weekend? No. He went out in public. They put him in front of the podium. He's like, uh, I have a sister who was, when we were growing up, was three years younger than me. Now she's 23 years younger than me. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. What did you say? So when he was growing up, his sister was three years younger than him. But now she's 23 years younger than him. Hmm. He said that. And then he's like, oh, he misspoke. Misspoke what? That's nonsensical ramblings of a freaking lunatic mind. So the Saudis said, well, we got Sniffy Joe, the dementia meat puppet over here. And then we got Putin over here who he might be evil, but at least he's cognitive. Okay. So they decided to go with Putin. Well, Putin, or well, Biden's like, hey, you Saudis, you better, you, you better make a deal with us and sell us oil or else he gave them an ultimatum when, when we and jared we, we saw this right it was like a couple days ago or we we're at the gym and the story biden issues saudi's ultimatum like can you imagine that moronic meat remember when zach remember when uh, on the campaign trail when he was attacking people at his rallies listen here fat you want to go outside? And <laughs> he was challenging. We, were, we, were, we used to joke about how the Secret Service is like, no, please tell me that he's not challenging people to fights. Yeah, g- getting in chest thumping, like yeah, finger like, pointing, face to face arguments. Tell, let me tell you what. It's like, you do realize that I would break your hip, right? <laughs> you know, the Secret Service guys behind him were like, oh, God, he's challenging people to fights again. Please stop. Because one of these days, some some union worker is just going to go, (laughs) pow! You you know, I've done security for people. I can't imagine being a bodyguard for somebody that goes out in public to pick fights Fights, with people. (laughs) It's like, please don't do this. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. So he still thinks, I don't know what, he still thinks he's fighting corn pop in the parking lot outside the pool in 1957 or something. so he tells the saudis hey he's a bad dude though hey you you need to, to do what i said and so the saudis are like oh really well so they went to the daily mail dot co dot uk and said let us tell you exactly what the real story is so here's the real story. It says Saudis released bombshell statement saying Biden did try to delay oil production cut until after the midterms in spite bid to avoid gas in desperate. prices. Oh, yeah, in desperate bid to avoid gas prices spiking 
as White House hits back and claims Kingdom new OPEC deal would benefit Putin. The uh, duh. A uh, bombshell statement from Saudi Arabia states that Biden administration reached out and pleaded with them to delay the OPEC deal to cut oil production until after the midterms. Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan said uh, Thursday morning that U.S. officials suggested postponing the decision to reduce output by 2 million barrels a day by a month until November 8th. So it's okay for the gas prices to spike on November 9th. That's okay. We just need to run. We just need to cover. We just need to create this illusion that gas prices are going down so people will vote for Democrats. And then after it's over, once we've won the elections, screw them. The gas prices can go back up because what are people going to do? The election's over. They're just screwed for another two years. The kingdom also brushed off suggestions it sided with Russia by insisting it took a principled position on the Ukraine war and said the OPEC decision was entirely based on economics, not politics. So the, the, the number one question that we should all be asking ourselves is, why are we even having this conversation? Why are we, why do we care how much oil Saudi Arabia produces or doesn't produce? Let me take you back three years. Three years ago, America was producing more oil and de facto gasoline than it needed. Three years ago, we were producing enough oil that we could sell it. Where are we today? Well, thanks to Democrats, to the criminals in Washington, D.C., instead of being energy independent like we were three years ago, now we're energy dependent. That didn't happen by itself. It wasn't just going to happen. It happened because we allowed this meat puppet to be installed in the White House. We shouldn't have to be begging any country for oil. And we wouldn't have to beg any country for oil if we didn't have scumbag liberals, leftists, and anti-America Democrats in the United States ruining the country. But that, see, that is just one of the sneaky little uh, things that they were trying to do to deceive you prior to the election. Let's go to number two. Hold on a sec. I want to read the portion okay. of this. The full statement is here in the story. If you want to read it, it's really short. Um, I'll read the portion that specifically talks about delaying the decision. It says the government of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia would also like to clarify that based on its belief in the importance of dialogue and exchange of views with its allies and partners outside of the OPEC plus group, Regarding the situation in the oil markets, the government of the kingdom clarified through its continuous consultation with the U.S. administration that all economic analysis indicate that postponing the OPEC plus decision for a month, according to what has been suggested, suggested would have had a negative economic consequence or negative economic consequences. So that's the portion about delaying. Did you ever think that you'd be reading a story about USA versus Saudi Arabia and the Saudi Arabians would be the reasonable ones? Yeah. Now, one thing that I I don't know if I agree with completely is that it says, um, where is it? I just read it a second ago. Oh, here we go. It says the kingdom also brushed off, brushed off suggestions it sided with Russia by insisting it took a principled position on the Ukraine war and said that the OPEC decision was entirely based on economics, not politics. I'm not sure if the, in this day and age, if there is a decision that can be made 100% based upon economics without including any political decisions. Well, if, if you're Saudi Arabia, you're like, okay, the, we got the United States and they've been buying a lot of oil from us for a long time, but look where they are on planet earth they're what i don't know how many how many thousands of miles away a few thousand no more than that like, like from saudi arabia from the united states is what five thousand miles or whatever it doesn't matter it's a thousand. lot russia 
is right there. All right, they're both in Asia. All right. So if it comes to who should we appease and who should we be partners with or who should we be buddies with? Should we be buddies with with Sniffy Joe the retarded meat puppet or should we be buddies with Putin? Which one's going to benefit us? And I got a question for you guys, whether you're Putin haters or or whatever, why should any country on planet Earth or any government of any country trust the United States? After the poll out in the Middle East, I don't think there's any reason for them to. Yeah, well, we have this 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 ever since World War II, ever since World War II, we have this pattern of behavior of coming to your rescue and then simultaneously fornicating you after we've said we look what we did to the afghanis we went over there we're like trust us side with us we'll make everything great and then oh bye see ya we're out of here taliban's back in charge so and everybody who sided with us is running for their lives or they've already been killed why should anybody why should any government of any country trust us we have we have we screw them that is our history now i'm i'm sure other countries do it too i'm not saying that other countries don't do it but we're not we don't have this bright white hat we're the we're the ultimate good guys because the people in Washington. I'm not talking about you out there in in the hinterlands uh, in the heartland of America. I'm talking about the scumbag criminals in Washington. They're liars and they screw over everyone that they supposedly are here to rescue. And when when push comes to shove, when they're all done laundering money in in the Ukraine, they'll screw them over too. All right, so uh, that's that was evidence number one of Democrat uh, election potential election tampering. They're trying to uh, they wanted the gas prices to go down just until the elections. They can go up after the election because we've already we already got our votes then. So who cares? Screw the people then. You know, it's always a mistake or an it, it's it's a oops when they get caught. Colorado officials. Oops. They incorrectly sent out 30,000 voter registration postcards to non-citizens. Oh. Colorado officials claim they accidentally sent approximately 30,000 postcards last month to non-citizens, instructing them how they could register to vote. Oh. First reported by Colorado Public Radio News, Democratic Secretary of State Gina Griswold's office said department employees had sent the postcards on September 27th after comparing a list of 102,000 names provided by Electronic Registrations Information Center, uh, a nonprofit organization aiming to improve U.S. voter rolls and yeah. advocating residents to vote. Yeah. See, here's what they're, they're mad about, is they accidentally got caught. They inc oh crap, we got caught. Somebody caught us. They're not supposed to catch us till after the election. And then after the election, we're like, well, nothing we can do about it now. Remember in California, uh what was it about five, six, seven years ago when I pointed out the criminality of giving illegal aliens IDs? Well, these people are going to be in our country anyway, so we have to give them IDs. So we'll give them driver's licenses. Like, you don't give a state ID to someone who's in your country illegally. Can you imagine any other country on planet Earth? You sneak into the country illegally. You don't come through the front door. You don't show up with a passport. You sneak in. Then you go to a government building and you're like hey i need a driver's license and they're like oh sure we know that you came into our country illegally but here's a government id well in california they also have the motor voter 
law they pass it it's great it's gonna oh it's gonna keep people from being disenfranchised and then we found out that all these illegals that they gave driver's licenses to they accidentally registered them to vote did they really this is when we have to look and say really they accidentally registered them to vote because they couldn't have seen that happen they're like well, let's see, we're giving driver's licenses to illegal aliens, uh, illegal invaders, and we have this thing where we automatically register you to vote when you get a driver's license. So they accidentally registered tens of thousands of illegal invaders to vote. And then in 2020, what did they do? They mailed them. We, we can't let people vote in person. The world will end. So all these people who shouldn't be in the country anyway, well, they got ballots in the mail. And they filled them out for their favorite Democrat. Sent them back in. It was an accident. Oops. So Colorado got caught accidentally registering or attempting to register. And they're like, oh, this is a not-for-profit. Get out the vote. Can we all just be honest with each other that all the not-for-profit get out the vote organizations are not about making sure that valid United States citizens who have a right or a legal right to vote in that county vote? No. And one other editorial. Jerry, do you have this story open? Uh, yeah, I can open it real quick. So this is it. a story from October 10th, 2022. October 10th, 2022. So the, uh, the Democrat attorney or was she the secretary general secretary general of colorado standing in front of a podium to explain how they accidentally and the sycophants behind her are all wearing masks are you kidding are you kidding when is this going to be over is it ever going to be over well they said it was over I don't know yeah. where this picture is from. It might be from a different thing. Well, I mean, that's her press conference. What is it about this specific thing? Say, well, I don't care if it's about freaking food stamps or, or, or rubber baby bumpers. The fact is, it's 2022, and these imbeciles are still standing around with masks on. Well, that's what I'm saying is this picture could be from 2020 or 2021. Mm. Well, there's an image source right there. So either way. It's retarded. So that's, you're like, okay, so the gasoline scam, that's just one thing, Paul. And then the Colorado accidentally registering 30, or accidentally trying to register 30,000 illegals, that's just a, another thing. <sighs> yeah, but there's another thing. Oops, I did it again bleeping.com fbi warns of disinformation threats we had a conversation about this on the way to the gym the other day october 6 setting the table for voter fraud this is you oh, yeah. this is when Sorry, you jump i was in. just looking because there's i searched this image via google mm -hmm. and uh there's a lot of other stories that use this so it's like a stock image of oh. of that so it's happening. It's it's stupid on purpose. Yeah, it's probably so it's because, deliberately stupid because of the publisher that is publishing it. That's the message that they want to send to their audience. Why did it even happen in the first place? It's part of the problem with the internet. Never wore a mask. FBI warns of disinformation threats f before 2022 midterm elections. That's right. The Federal Bureau of Investigation warned today of foreign influence operations that might spread disinformation to affect the results of this year's midterm elections. Did we're you do, say we're KGB? doing this again? Did you say KGB? The Federal oh. Law Enforcement Agency warned that foreign actors are actively spreading election infrastructure disinformation to manipulate public opinion, discredit the electoral process, sow discord, 
and encourage a lack of trust in democratic process and institutions. Mm. You mean so after they, when we find out like we did in 2020 about all the chicanery and dead people voting and people voting 12 times and, and literal bins filled with ballots that they just run through real quick at 4 a.m. When we find out stuff like that and we bring it up, then that's all dis that's disinformation. As the FBI added, foreign actors might also target the public with attempts to incite violence before and after the midterms. Oh, foreign actors, huh? Oh, okay. Which which foreign actors would these be? Foreign actors may intensify efforts to influence outcomes of the 2022 midterm elections by circulating or amplifying reports of real or alleged malicious cyber activity on election infrastructure, the FBI said in a public service announcement jointly issued with CISA. So the FBI is warning that somebody might go out and try to incite violence. Well, like they, the said FBI. Foreign, they said foreign actors. Do they mean Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> that's funny. He's Canadian, you know. Yeah, that's right. A. It Additionally, could. these foreign actors may create and knowingly disseminate false claims and narratives regarding voter suppression, voter or ballot fraud, and other false information intended to undermine confidence in the election processes and influence public opinion of the election's legitimacy. I, I don't really believe that we need foreigners to undermine our confidence in the election process. Disinformation campaigns, oh man, that's a stupid venue. Disinformation campaigns could use various channels to spread and amplify false claims, including spoofed websites, fake social media personas, and dark web and publicly available media channels. These platforms could be used to spread claims that election infrastructure has been compromised using hacked or leaked U.S. voter registration data likely to cast doubt on the election's legitimacy. While some voter registration information is publicly available, the FBI and CISA have no information suggesting any cyber activity against U.S. election infrastructure has impacted the accuracy of voter registration information, uh, prevented a registered voter from casting a ballot, or compromised the integrity of any ballots cast, the PSA says. All right, so here's, after all of that, the Reader's Digest common sense version is this the kgb i mean fbi uh, fib is uh, they're getting out ahead of the election fraud so that when it happens and you find out about it then they can say well we we told you that uh yeah that it was gonna uh was going to happen so it was foreign it was foreign actors that are making you think that and so any anybody who comes out and questions the legitimacy kind of like uh remember the the surveillance video of the people in georgia shutting down the polls and sending the workers out and then pulling out bins of ballots from under the table and running them while everybody's out of the room that's that's foreign actors sowing dissent remember when uh, a semi truck full of mail-in ballots left new york and drove to pennsylvania and then disappeared well i, just, I mean so what i mean that so there's nothing there remember when uh, dinesh d'souza released a movie about two thousand mules where he meticulously detailed using not just cell phone data you know how the jared that the left discredited that they said oh that was uh bad bad cell phone data two thousand cases of bad cell phone data what about the surveillance cameras that showed guys coming showing up at midnight with backpacks full of bullets but ballots i mean i some people have backpacks full of bullets but not these guys backpacks full of ballots and shoving them fistfuls into the boxes that was erroneous cell phone data well that was just one or two or 12 or two thousand cases yeah but all those cases took place in the swing states like pennsylvania and wisconsin and well 
that's just that's foreign actors that's that's disinformation and if you talk about it on facebook we're going to shut you down if you talk about it on instagram we're going to shut you down so you know where you're not going to be able to shut it down on juxy no well yeah juxy parlor do you see what just happened uh uh kanye yeah 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 his yeah, name is, his name is yeah, 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 yeah. So one the of the artist things, formerly known as Kanye, Kanye, he, is buying uh, pill buy parlor, parlor. Yeah. So one of the things that it says here, um, said somewhere in here, I scrolled past it. Dang it! It said to only use trusted sources. Oh, yeah. It's a. It's the title. Americans urge to use trusted sources only. Okay, Meaning, I have a question. What are we supposed to trust online now? Yeah. Oh, like because, CNN? Well, because the, the mainstream media, now we know that they were pushing stories about the the vaccine being actually working and, and limiting the... Save your grandma's life. Get the shot. Yeah, limiting the, ex, not exposure, but limiting the um, transmission of the coronavirus. But now we fast forward to 2022 and we the, the Pfizer themselves said that they had no data that that was the case. They just said it. So now we're now we're faced with okay. Well, the media did they lied to us? Why the mainstream media did? And then if you think about like these the smaller sites, like for instance, the one that you're listening to right now, Student of the Gun. <coughs> how how do how do you choose who to listen to and who to trust? And then how do you choose who is untrustworthy? Well, it's really easy when you're the KGB. Uh, you will you will trust the source that we tell you to trust, and uh, you will not trust the source that we tell you not to trust. That's that's it. Uh, any any anything that goes against the Washington D.C. narrative is disinformation. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. Oh man! So the stage is being set. Democrats are setting the stage for more voter fraud. And I've been saying this literally for two full years. People are like, oh, man, I can't wait till 2022. It's going to be, oh, it's going to be a bloodbath. We're going to do it. Like, okay, what have we changed? What have we done differently? Or what are we doing differently to make sure that the fraud that occurred in 2020 does not occur again? Because if you're, it's like, because in 2020, people are like, oh, yeah, but people are mad now. I'm like, we were mad two years ago. Americans were mad two years ago. Americans could not wait to get to the polls in 2020. They were sick of everything in 2020. And what happened? I don't know. What happened, Paul? Well, people are mad and they're sick of it now. What has happened? What has changed? You ask ask yourself that. Be uh, intellectually honest. Uh, this week on Student of the Gun University podcast, we are going to begin a four part series on the four pillars of combat. And pillar number one is mindset. Yes, indeed. Pillar number one is mindset. So, if you are not listening to the Student of the Gun University podcast, you should. It's free. It doesn't cost you nothing. It's like a beer at the at the uh, Delta House. Don't cost you nothing. So get on there. Get on there. Yes, indeed. What do we got coming up uh, for tomorrow's bonus hour? Uh, we got uh, the Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard torches Democrats and court spanks New York again. We got a leadership lesson for you and fighting fitness. All of that's coming up tomorrow on the bonus hour. If you'd like to join us for the bonus hour, well, we'd like you to be there. All you got to do is go to getsotg.com. That's right. Getsotg.com. Sign up, and uh, you can be part of the grad program, be a happy camper, and, and be with like-minded individuals. You know you want to. You know you want to. All right. That's it for today, kids. Uh Get your stickers, get your hug your AK stickers, hug your AK post pictures and all that good stuff. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, 
head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links, and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.